is Esther Wojcicki. I am the founder of the Palo Alto High School Media Arts Program. I've been a teacher in Palo Alto for 35 years. I thought Darcy Vargas School was exceptional. One thing that stood out for me is how happy all the kids were. And, uh, you know, I went into many classes and they were all happy. And I don't think they knew I was coming. And also, it's hard to make kids look happy when they're not happy. I'm just impressed with what people are doing here to help schools that need a little help. I think that Nove Mestra is doing a great job and they're bringing uh, Google tools to all the schools and though that is really the key to making education interesting, exciting, and useful for the 21st century. In 2015, I wrote a book called Moonshots in Education and it was very popular. So it had three different printings and then it was translated into Spanish. And now I'm really happy to say it's gonna be translated into Portuguese by Nuve Mestra and what we're going to do is give the proceeds of the sale of that book to all the schools that, um, that need it. And I, I'm really excited about supporting all the schools and all the students and the teachers, and I hope they enjoy the book. The main skill the teacher needs to have is the change of mindset. They need to think of themselves as a guide. They need to not be afraid of collaborating with the students because sometimes students actually know more than the teacher. And the teacher's afraid to ask and the students are afraid to say anything. But that's crazy, they should be working together. The goal is education for the student. And then the teacher can give a lecture too for a short time because nobody can listen to a lecture for a long time. Even if you're an adult, you fall asleep after about 20 minutes. So, <laughs> so the idea is let's keep it short and sweet and give students an opportunity to control their learning. And that's what the Moonshot is. So I see Nuve Mestra is doing a great job of training whole schools. So my theory is that no teacher can really learn how to use it in a one-day seminar. You might try, but it's really hard. You need the whole team to work together. And so what Nuve Mestra is doing is they are working with all parts of the school. So the administrators, you know, the teachers, you know, even, and the parents and the students and everybody has to be involved. It's a, it's a system change. I think that what you're doing is really the solution. So my history with Google is related to my daughter, Susan, um, who bought a house in Menlo Park many, about 20 years ago. She decided that she needed some help paying the mortgage for the house. And so she looked around for some friends um, that might want to rent, or she's near Stanford University. And so the people that said they wanted to rent just happened to be Larry Page and Sergey Brin. And so they moved in, and they just happened to be Google. And in six months, she decided, hmm, this company looks like maybe they're doing good work. You know, because she tried their search engine, and she's like, oh, I can, I can actually find what I want. They must be doing something right. And so she quit her job at Intel and she joined Google. And um, so today she's the CEO of YouTube. The answer from Larry and Sergey was, you know, Google is education. You're always learning. Why do we need to have anything special for the schools? My idea was like, teachers need help. They need something special. Google bought YouTube. And so it was a, it was a wonderful purchase because it democratized video for the whole world. It's an absolutely fantastic platform, and my students use it all the time. You know, there are more than one billion views of YouTube videos, YouTube education videos, every day. So people are using it to learn. When Steve was in between Apple and then uh, he had been fired from Apple, and he was then starting Next, he didn't have a lot to do. And his daughter, Lisa, was in my class. And um, I didn't know who he was at all. And, you know, his daughter Lisa was a great student and I was really happy to have her. She became one of the editors of the newspaper. And Steve would come in to the class and just hang out. <laughs> and I really liked Steve. You know, he was a, a very talented and very caring person. 
He loved teachers. That's why he really liked me, which is I'm very honored. And um, you know, he did a lot of things to help me. I'm very happy to say that there is nothing that is more powerful in the classroom, in my opinion, as a teacher, than the Google Docs. My students can edit each other's work, spreadsheets because, or sheets it's called, because they can make plans and do documents together and presentations. They can work on those presentations together from home at any time of day or night they want to. They don't have to be in the same room. They just need to have a computer that's open. So all the tools for an especially classroom. Classroom is the latest Google tool and a teacher's dream come true is all I can say. But well, the number one advice for students that are almost graduating is that you've been taught to fear failure. You've been taught that the most important thing you can do is get all the answers right. And if you don't get all the answers right, then you get really upset. The fact is, it's really important to realize that it's okay to make a mistake and to redo it again. You know, it was worth it. You just have to step back and say, well, it's okay for me to try something, and then if it doesn't work out, your mindset is the key. If you can think of yourself as being willing to take a risk and then don't let it make you so upset, then everything will work out. They publish a newspaper called the Campanile and it comes out every two to three weeks. It's 24 to 28 pages, full size paper. And it's all run by students. They come up with the story ideas, they write the stories, they do the layout and design, they edit each other's stories, they put it up on a website, they have websites, they do everything. And then there's another magazine, Verde, and then a sports magazine, Viking, and then an arts and entertainment magazine, C Magazine, and Agora is foreign affairs magazine, and then we have a travel magazine, and we have a science magazine. You know, this is all because students are interested. I mean, I'm not telling them to be interested in this. They're interested because that's what they're interested in always thought that the only way to change the schools is to change the system within the schools. So I'm, I think that this holds promise for all schools. Schools in wealthy areas, schools in poor areas, especially schools in poor areas. Because my theory is that those kids, they're really smart and they're just bored. And they have, actually have more street smarts than the kids coming from wealthy families. And they can do it. You're just given an opportunity to work independently and they will revolutionize the world. I saw my daughters, my number one philosophy with my daughters was if they can do it themselves, they should do it. So basically, I never do anything for my kids that they can do for themselves. You can get dressed by yourself. I don't have to help you get dressed, right? You can pour your own cereal in the morning. I mean, like, why not? You know, let me teach you how to pour the milk so you don't spill it all over the floor. You know, they could help make cookies. They, there's a lot of stuff they could do. And um, it, all, it just became natural, part of life, that they were part of the team. It wasn't like I was the person to serve them. They were part of my team. I'm going to tell them that Brazil is pretty amazing. It is probably the most beautiful country I've been in, and I'm very happy to be here.